Hey everyone, so today we are back in my spooky kitchen. So we're just gonna make dinner. It may not be dinner where you're at right now, but it's actually a really late dinner. It's like 7.40, it's gonna be like nine o'clock before I eat, but that's all right. Yeah, anyways, we're gonna be making dinner together, hanging out, uh, and then I'm making, uh, I guess I should mention, it's like a veggie bean enchilada situation. Um, this recipe I came up with after trying a lot of different veggie enchilada recipes on Pinterest and I just wasn't crazy about them. I like making meals with a lot of vegetables that are really healthy, but I don't wanna sacrifice taste. Like I really want it to taste maybe like it's not so healthy or something. You know what I mean? Like taste like the real deal. But, and that's kind of how I've done even my um, green bean casserole, like it's not healthy. <laughs> it's just vegetarian or dairy-free, gluten-free, all the things. The good thing about this recipe is on its own, I think it's really good. My husband also, it's his favorite so far that we've tried. Um, so it's a really good baseline recipe anyways. And if you wanted to add things like, I'm gonna be using dairy-free cheese. If you wanted to use dairy, like just regular cheese or regular sour cream or add meat or whatever it is that works for you and your family. I'm not here to like preach anything to you. Do what you do, eat what you eat. Um, this is just what I happen to do. Anyways, before I just keep talking, cause you know I will, um, I'm gonna start with an adult beverage because why not? It is, it is, <laughs> it is, it just is right now. Um, my husband brought home this cider. It's called Stim Cider is the brand and it's this rose apple cider. I guess I'll just drink it out of the can or should I put it in a glass? I'm pretending like I've never had a cider before, but it's a rose cider. Mm. Ooh, ooh, that's good. Mm. That's good. Anyways, I'm gonna have this full recipe down in the description box for you. Um, but I guess I should mention what we're gonna need. So you're gonna need a yellow onion. This one is just, I, I call this a medium size. Maybe it's small, I don't know. Eight ounces of mushrooms. It's just one small pack or like half of a large pack. Um, and I already cleaned them off. I don't know how well I cleaned them off, but um, at this point with what's happening in the world, I'm not really worried about eating dirt. A bag of spinach, I like this. I've only made this recipe with kale. I'm assuming it's gonna be similar, um, but I get the bagged kale from Aldi. I know Target also sells a big bag of kale. It's already shredded. With that one, you really wanna make sure you saute it really well, which I'm gonna do here in a second, but you wanna make sure you saute it longer than the spinach because the spinach is gonna wilt faster. But um, the kale, especially the shredded kale, it usually has the stems on it when it comes in a bag and the stems need to be softened for sure. Otherwise they're hard and crunchy, which is just gross. You just have to saute it for longer. Also refried beans. Uh, I use one can of, I like the black refried beans, but either one, if you don't have that on hand, regular is fine. Also uh, shredded cheese, whatever kind you like. I have two different types. I have, these are both non-dairy. I'm using the Aldi, it's like the earth grown, vegan mozzarella style shreds from Aldi. This is really uh, melty, like really uh, gooey. And so it's good for inside of an enchilada, but not on the outside. So I'll use this. This is the Daya cheese. This is the cheddar style because they were out of the mozzarella. But if you can find the mozzarella, that's the one to get. Uh, but I'm gonna be using the cheddar. I'm using both of these inside of the enchilada and just this one on the outside. Also, gonna need some verde sauce, green salsa, or if you prefer red, you can use red, or if just an enchilada sauce. If you have that on hand, will totally work. Green or red, either one. Uh, and then some sour cream. I would say like a big-ish container of sour cream because we're gonna use quite a bit, but at least 12 ounces. But I have the non-dairy tofuti sour cream. Also, this is optional, but I like spicy food. So uh, diced jalapenos and also uh, some corn tortillas, which I need to get. Either corn or flour tortillas, but if you are gluten-free, uh, corn tortillas are the way to go. Also for garnish, just go crazy with it. I'm gonna have some green onions and cherry tomatoes if they're still good. <laughs> I'm really trying to ration things and go as long as possible. Uh, so maybe cherry tomatoes, but whatever it is that you like on top of your enchiladas. Let's get a turn on this camera. Okay, we're gonna cut up an onion. Uh, and don't at me with my skills, okay? I'm not admitting to having any sort of skills. I like to cook, doesn't mean that I am a chef. You know what I mean? Okay, and I'm only using half of this yellow onion. Where I need a bowl to put my trash in. 
Um, so I don't want it to be an overwhelming amount of onions, but you know, gotta have like the good amount. And half for me is about good. Um, I'll do the bigger half too. Okay, do not cry on me now, girl. I'm gonna try to cut this quick. This door really got it all how I cut an onion. I am not used to cutting things without nails, so I'm terrified for my life. Usually my long claws are my guard while I'm cutting things, so I can like, I don't know, I start filming and all of a sudden I don't even know what I'm doing or saying or... Clearly not stressed at all, not stressed at all. Okay, not a stressful time. <laughs> this is real life. Okay, cutting this up really small. I'm just eyeballing it. Who knows what the measurements are? Good luck. I'm just kidding. I would say a small onion diced is about what I'm looking at right here. Okay. What was I saying? Oh, that all this happened really fast. I don't know what happened in your area. By the way, I'm just going to chop up these mushrooms and dice them. Because I like them small. Anyways. Let me just keep rolling. <laughs> anyway, uh, so... It kind of happened just really quick and everyone panicked. It was like everything happened at the same time. I don't know if this happened in your area. If it did, you can let me know in the comments. Um, it was kind of like all these events got canceled, right? And then people, like school got called off for, now it's like the entire, uh, where I'm at, it's the entire rest of the year. And all these things were happening and all at once. And so everyone rushed to all of the grocery stores and there were like shelves were bought out. It was just, by the way, I didn't even mention that I'm wearing a full on long underwear ensemble with my Halloween socks and my orthopedic sandals that I just put on my counter and I have no shame about it. And that is, that is pretty much my life right now in quarantine. Literally the slowest ever right now. I need to pick up the pace, girl. Oh, I was gonna ask. Like how you guys, like how often you're going grocery shopping and how you're doing the grocery shopping thing. Cause I'm trying to do where I go grocery shopping every two to three, I'm trying to go three weeks if I can. But I'm gonna try to do where the produce, like fresh produce lasts, you know, for the first week or two. Sometimes produce for me lasts like two weeks. And then the last week or week and a half or whatever it ends up being, I use canned or frozen vegetables, that kind of thing, or frozen meals, or maybe make stuff ahead of time and freeze it. All right, so I'm gonna shred some of the spinach because I'm not gonna use, like I don't want the whole big spinach leaf. I do kind of want to shred it a little bit. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut it. And some of these don't look so good. It's looking a little bit yellow. It still smells good. Oh, anyways, I was just curious to see how you guys were doing meals. I just, when I chop spinach, I kind of just bunch it all together so it's, it gives it a little bit of girth. And then I just go in and like slice it like so. Just watch your fingers. Okay, anyway, now I'm just talking forever and not cooking. What time is it? 8.19, I've been sitting here talking for an hour. All right, so now that everything is cut up, oh, I guess I'll make my, well, first of all, let me preheat the oven to 350. No. All right, preheating the oven to 350. I'm, uh, we'll go ahead and make our enchilada sauce is what it is. But what I'm doing is it's like a creamy enchilada sauce over the top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sour cream and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna start with half of it. So six ounces. So I'm gonna take half of it and I'm gonna put it in a bowl. I'm just eyeballing half. It doesn't have to be exactly six ounces. Um, putting it in here and then I'm going to add the Verde salsa. This is from Aldi. This is my Aldi haul if you watched it. And when I dump this in, I'm just gonna put a good amount in. I don't know how much that is. Fourth of a cup, half of a cup. I don't know, as much as you want. This is kind of to taste, I feel like. So if you don't, and if you don't like Verde salsa, I've done this type of sauce for enchiladas with um, even just Taco Bell hot sauce packets <laughs> in the sour cream, like leftover <laughs> from Taco Bell, uh, or just, if you already have enchilada sauce, just mix your enchilada sauce in with the sour cream and then just stir it up. I'm also going to put some jalapeno juice in it and probably some jalapenos. Let's put some mm, get kind of spicy. And I like it kind of watery, so sometimes I add some water too. We'll see, but the water, when you add it, 
a little bit at a time, like the tiniest little amount at a time because it gets real thin real quick and then it also can lose flavor. So I don't want that to happen. Just every once in a while, I'll taste it. But you know, if you're having guests over, make sure, well, I guess no one's having guests over. Who am I kidding? Needs more flavor. And yeah, it was about six ounces. This is gonna be enough. I'm gonna, mm, I'm being all sanitary up in here. No big deal. So I just put, I have a, a glass of water sitting here that I've been drinking out of. Once again, probably not sanitary. You can use your sink or distilled five times water, vodka, no, <laughs> tequila, whatever. But maybe tequila might be good. I don't think I have any, but I think it'd probably be good. Actually, I'm kind of hungry. What the heck? Fresh bag of chips. You're honestly not even cooking if you don't have a snack. Let's go ahead and dip it in here. We're just wearing our sweatpants for the next 30 days. All right, that's gonna be good. Okay, now, ooh, got chips in that. This could be a dip on its own, this sour cream thing. All right, so now, what are we doing? So I'm gonna get out a nine by 13 Pyrex dish. That's what it looks like. 9 by 13. Grease it with olive oil, or I'm gonna use some nonstick canola oil cooking spray. I'm just gonna spray this on here. And I also put a little bit of the salsa on the bottom. I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit. Next. Oh, let's start cooking. All right, so I'm gonna turn my burner on medium ish and i'm gonna put some olive oil i don't know tablespoon i just do this maybe whatever is enough to coat the pan is kind of what i do and i let it heat up all right so onions go in first oh that wasn't quite hot enough yet i like to hear a sizzle but that's all right okay sizzling now i'm gonna put a little salt in there with the onion i'm going to cook these until they're translucent I don't know, a couple minutes usually, and they're good to go. Just wanna soften them up for the enchilada because I don't want them to be crunchy. All right, next up, mushrooms. Putting these in here. And I'm putting in about, I don't know, a tablespoon of these diced jalapenos. Mmm. I'm gonna mix this up. You can also add taco seasoning or any sort of like cumin or chili powder. I got some chili powder out, but I don't know if I wanna put it in this or not. I'm kinda going for the verde sauce kind of deal, so that's why I put jalapenos in here. You can put more spices and doctor it up all you want. Yeah, I'm just letting the, whoa, the mushrooms kinda cook down a little bit because I want them to be smaller because I don't want the vegetables to shrink down in the oven. All right, so next I'm gonna add, the, I'm gonna turn the burner down quite a bit to low. And I'm gonna add the spinach because that will wilt really quickly. I'm also gonna add the refried beans. We're gonna heat those up as well. Oh literally the whole can <laughs> and then i kind of just smash the re <laughs> smush the refried beans down with the back of the spoon at this point we're just kind of warming everything up the we're getting the spinach to wilt a little bit and well, a lot of it and we're also heating up whoops i swear i know what i'm doing everything is falling out of the pan what a time to be alive folks and then I'm just stirring it around. And also I usually add a little bit of sour cream. There's mushrooms all over my floor, but that's okay. What? I don't know, I'll add a tablespoon or so, a big whopping tablespoon of sour cream. 
mix it in there, make it kind of creamy. And you can add salt and pepper to taste at this point if you want to. I usually think it's pretty good. I might add a little bit more jalapenos. We'll see how spicy it is. And then it kind of just makes this filling is essentially what we're making. So it all just kind of binds together. All right, let's try this. I will say the spinach is good, but the kale is where it's at. All right, so next is the fun part. I can't stop eating this filling. <laughs> okay, turn that off. All right, so now I'm gonna be using this crepe pan. I knew this would come in handy, but any pan will do. But I'm just gonna heat up the corn tortillas. Are we hot yet? Good, we are hot. All right, I'm gonna put, if you've never done this before, I'm gonna put my corn tortilla on the pan, whatever pan it is, skillet pan type of thing. I'm gonna let it get warm. So I'm not gonna let it get crispy or anything like that. I just gotta get warm to where it can be more pliable. And so I'm gonna heat it up on both sides. All right. So you'll see how bendable it is now if the lighting is halfway decent. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a spoonful, like a little bit of the sour cream and just lay it down. And kind of just, I'm just kind of spread it around the tortilla. And then I'm gonna do cheese. This enchilada is gonna have yellow. The next one, well maybe I'll have yellow and white. Let's, let's live on the edge, do both. Okay, then I'm gonna go into my filling, which is right here. I'm gonna take a scoop of filling and I'm gonna put just enough in there. Like, I don't wanna overfill it. Can I turn on a light here? Service light. Oh, bingo, this is so good. Okay, so I'm gonna put just enough filling in here so I can still roll it up. Like, I don't wanna overfill it. And plus, we got, we got a lot of enchiladas to make. Now we're gonna roll it up. And since we heated these up, they should be super easy to roll. Just kind of roll it over like this and the sour cream kind of helps seal it. Then, all good. And then we're gonna place it in the casserole dish. Put it in there, put it out of the way. We're gonna move on to our next. So I get another corn tortilla out, repeat the process. Heat it up and heat up both sides of the tortilla. Then, put it on the plate. Do a little sour cream, and I can move pretty quick with these. Come on. Oops, I kind of cut open on accident. Swap on some sour cream, just enough to kind of help you seal it is kind of what I do. Do, and put our cheeses in. Okay, now we're going in. Here's this, and then I kind of just do a strip down the center. If you put too much in there, it's a little hard to roll up. You can make it work. Just make a fat old enchilada. It's totally fine, it's gonna be okay. Back to the enchilada, or I keep calling it an enchilada thing. It's a casserole dish. I'm going to put this in there. Boop. Okay, corn tortilla, do do do. Hope you guys are having fun. Ooh, I just totally stuck my hand on that. Now we're back onto the sour cream. May not be the healthiest food, but there's vegetables in it. Ah! No, get out, get out, get out, get out. This is gonna, I think that's gonna be the last one. We might have a little bit left over to snack on, which I may or may not have done on purpose. All right, let's roll this guy up. This one's way overfilled. And he can go, can I fit another one there? I don't think so. I'll just put that there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight's good. I mean, it really would probably make 10 if you needed it to, the filling would. We're doing that. So let's take this. We're gonna take the casserole dish and I'm going to put this sour cream and verde salsa mixture over the top, like so. And as I'm doing it, I kinda take the back of a spoon or a spatula or whatever you have and kind of smear it over the top a little bit and then continue to spoon it over. Don't forget the Lone Ranger here. That kind of just randomly ended up at the top. And I also make sure I separate, this is really important, you separate the enchiladas so you get the sauce down in the sides. That's the good stuff. Just gonna push it over. Oh, I could have fit one there. Eh, I need an even number, so we're fine. 
All right. So I used all the sauce, really. Getting it all nice and coated on there. And then what I do is I put foil over it for now. But for right now, I just wanna cook the insides, but I don't wanna dry out the enchiladas. I take some foil and I put it over the top. I put it in the oven like this. A um, middle rack-ish. Set the timer to 30 minutes. And then what you really want though is you want that uh, cream sauce to be bubbly is what you're looking for. So um, in the meantime, I'm gonna snack on this a little bit and then I'm going to clean up. All right, so now that I've cleaned up the kitchen a little bit and that's still cooking, I'm gonna cut up some toppings. I have some cherry tomatoes and some green onions. I'm gonna chop up and uh, put whatever you have, cilantro, avocado, all the things, load it up, do what you wanna do. Uh, but this is all I have right now because I'm kinda, it's been a minute since I've been in the grocery store, so I'm kinda running low. I use one of the knives that has the ridges. So I need a knife with a ridge and then I, because it doesn't smash the tomato. And then I'm just gonna slice it into little slivers. All right, so I like to slice these up so it's more of like a buffet style. Once the enchiladas are done, then I have like sour cream and salsa and some tomatoes and green onions and then whoever, like your family, and sprinkle whatever they want over their enchiladas. Um, also, if you have people in your family who don't like onions or vegetables, um, of course, you could just do bean and cheese enchiladas and then do all the toppings uh, if you like the vegetables so that way everyone can have a little something. But I'm telling you, the cooked vegetables on the inside, it's where it's at, like where everything's kind of sauteed together. Ooh, it's good. I'm nervous without these nails on. They were like my security blanket. Oh. Put all this in here. So my little sides are ready to go. So we're gonna get this out of the oven. My oven is a disaster. That's something I need to do is clean it out during all of this. Okay. Let's open this up and see what we got. Looks good. Okay, now we're gonna put a bunch of cheese on the top. Shredded cheese. And then put it back in the oven for about five to 10 minutes. I'll check on it after five. Not gonna put the foil back on it though. Crisp up a little bit, but I don't want it to dry out. All right, so I'm gonna get this out. Woo! So this is what they're looking like right now. Cheese is melted. Maybe I should have put more cheese on there. I don't know. Anyways, cheese is melted. Cream sauce is just right, not too dried out. It looks a little bit brown on the bottom, but I pulled it out just in time, it looks like. Get a couple of these. Get in there. And quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna add some sour cream on the top, just a little dollop of sour cream. Also some tomatoes and green onions that we already chopped up, so it's gonna be super easy. Just, I like to just sprinkle them over the top. Look at this. I think this is the most colorful thing that's ever happened in my life. What I like to do is I like to, some people are gonna hate me for this, but I really like the Taco Bell hot sauce. I'm gonna put a little bit over the top of this. Um, you can also use fresh salsa or whatever salsa you want. I like the Taco Bell hot sauce. Judge me, I don't mind. And I'm going to dig in. I'm gonna take a big ol' bite. Ooh, it's steaming. Mmm, the combo cheese was the right move because there's like an ooey gooey cheese and then there's like, you know, a not so really like melty cheese. It's like the perfect combo. It's another good recipe. Gotta try it. Mmm. If you try it out, let me know in the comments. Ooh, I got something spicy. Either let me know in the comments, let me know on Instagram, hashtag jadelibra over on Instagram. Tag me in your stories if you make this, take a picture. Even if you're not making this, if you take pictures of what you're making for dinner or have any tips or tricks, since we're kind of all going through the same thing, 
very different like we're all having different experiences with this but none of us are going to the stores like we used to or going out to eat like we used to so i feel like we're all in the same boat when it comes to that so yeah i just want to hold on one more i should have made margaritas all right anyways that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed making dinner with me <laughs> It's always an interesting time when we cook together. Let me know if you wanna see more of these types of videos down in the comments. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Cheers. Hope you're doing okay over there. We're gonna get through this and oh.